Finally, I wanted to add this to the React to Angular playlist, but I felt like it should be its own video. So I'm going to go over um, making a component library. And it's really easy in React. You just make your components, compile it, and then publish it to NPM. However, it's not so easy with Angular. Um, the nature of React is reusability, so it obviously it would be easier. But Angular, however, everything needs to be inside of a module, <clears throat> and what you have to create is modules, so everything is packaged neatly for the end user. And right here, I just have a couple of component libraries. This one is Semantic UI, which is for React. I believe they have an Angular um, version. But what I'm basically talking about is stuff like this. So you just um, get some buttons. Uh, Semantic UI is one of my favorite ones to use, uh, just because of how it looks. The CSS is very, very nice. And then <clears throat> Material UI, which is created by the Angular team and definitely for it, Angular specifically. And there's, it's pretty plain for the most part, but there's some cool features like this form um, inputs. Uh, and then there's also other options like PrimeNG, which has a, a bit more um, components than Material UI. And then of course there's Bootstrap for both React and Angular. So this is the React one. So the normal nav components, the alerts from Bootstrap, and same thing with Angular. Here's the carousel as well as a modal. Very very basic. Um, I personally don't like to use Bootstrap because I think it's overused, so um, you kind of get sick of seeing this all over the place. Okay, so I created a fresh project, just a simple ng-new, and <clears throat> we're going to go over a couple of things that we need for creating a library. So uh, the first thing you need is um, something called ng packager. Uh, let me make sure I spell it right. So yarn add uh, ng packager. Uh, let's double check that really quick. Do, 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 do. Uh, believe that is correct. I'm just gonna add it really quick. Uh, that doesn't look right. ng packager. Do I need a dash? Okay, so it's ng dash packager. And then after we have that installed, we need to create a ng package dot json. All oh, right, touch. And that will be here when it spawns. All right, there you go. And let's just create this. So it needs um, a couple of things. So the schema is going to be uh, node modules, node modules slash ng packager package um, dot schema dot json. And then also lib for the directory that your library will live. Entry file is going to be dot slash source slash lib slash public api dot ts. And then we also need to white space or white list not white listed non peer dependencies and this is going to be um, basically all of these so 
was copying this. Actually, I'm not. Okay, let's just do this. Angular. Uh, double quotes. Remember to use double quotes with inside JSON. Core JS, RxJS, and zone.js. Alright, so to quickly go over this, um, the library is gonna live inside of of a library or a lib directory, and the entry file is public underscore API TS. I personally don't like the underscore snake case um, in JavaScript or TypeScript for that matter. Um, but this is the the syntax that they recommend for ng packager. And I'm just gonna show it up really quick. Slash ng packager. No, that doesn't work. ng packager. So if you go to npm or the actual GitHub, it will show you some more in-depth steps. But I'm um, if you follow along, you just do this. Um, and then the whitelisted peer dependencies is all of these, so Angular, CoreJS, RxJS, and ZoneJS. Uh, this is basically saying that when you um, install it from NPM, it's going to ignore installing these things and assume that uh, it's inside of an Angular project, so it'll already have access to these things. OK. Uh, one last thing, we also need to create a build script in here. And this is, we're going to build the, the library. So it's going to be separate from this build script here. And this one, I think it's just npg packager dash p ng dash package dot json. Let's double check that really quick. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so now let's actually get started on creating some stuff. So the structure of this project is basically um, in two folds. So we're going to do this. So we're going to make a directory called inside of source called lib. And then we're also going to make a, a public underscore API dot TS. OK, so the app is going to be our showcase. So if you go to the, it's going to be this web page, uh, essentially. And this is the React Bootstrap, so let's get rid of that. So it'll essentially be this, where you could click on each uh, component and you could um, you know test out the the component that you're gonna use and the library is actually gonna live inside of lib and we're just gonna make a simple button right now so ng generate components button actually it's gonna be a module so let's do that and for module button, let's see if that works. All right. Okay. Uh, it's not where I want it to be, so we're just gonna move it really quick. Source app button to source library button. Okay. Cool. So there we go. And then our public API, we just export the entire module. So export star from um, dot slash button. Oh, not not star. Uh, the actual button module. So button module. Oh, wrong file. There we go. <clears throat> That's all we have to do for the for the actual module. Now we need to create the component. Oh boy. I don't want to use the generate because it's going to put it in the wrong place. So 
Uh, do I want to do that? Yeah, I'm just going to do the shortcut. So, ng generate component button ng oops, not ng move everything inside of button slash star I don't know if that'll work actually ugh fine, I'll just do it this way boop move 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 and move uh, automatically import um no delete that module is coming around the wrong place now alright so our app module needs to import the outside module so it's gonna be down here button module of some library of public store or public API so that's good and let's get rid of these tests okay so there we go uh, declarations button component and then also we need to export our button component so then it's usable in whatever module that imports the button module okay so yeah a lot of steps in between but we are finally able we're finally at the point where we could just write code so um yeah let's let's just test that really quick so ng serve open do 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 wait for it to load okay um let's add the button in so in your app module be sure that you're importing the button module and then in here let's get rid of all this and we're just gonna do a h1 this is a button and let's see the selector is my app button I'm gonna change this to my because of my last name obviously in case I want to actually like make this into a thing a real thing so my dot button let's see if that works a button works all right so all we did was <coughs> change um, where the button lives it's outside of the app module we're importing it in and let's actually make this into a real button button um so a couple things uh let's close all of these uh, so let's just open up the component so with button uh we're gonna expect a click handler and that is gonna be in the property of handle click, which is gonna be an event emitter. Emitter equals new event emitter. And this is gonna be a output. Why is this red? Any. Cool. So doing that will allow us to will allow the button to be clicked agnostically. It could be handled or the logic can be handled from anyone else that's importing it. So we're just gonna do a handle click dot emit and we're gonna send in send out the event that's being handled. So we do that. And here we're just gonna do a click handler to test it. And we're just gonna call this uh, beep. Which will 
should break. Yeah, totally breaks. All right, and let's just make a simple function. Console log. Boop. All right, so let's see if it works. Boop, cool. Now we also want to uh, have text in our button, so uh, I'm gonna kind of do it the cheaty way. It's not really recommended because you want to uh, you want to only display text in here, but I'm not gonna add the check right now. Uh, just, just for the sake of time. So in our here, we're gonna say okay. There's our button. We could just click and it says okay. And then finally, we could add some CSS. So let's see what's the HTML for this. It's just button. Cool. So we're just gonna do button. Uh, color, not color. Background color is going to be, um, what color did I use? Let's see, go source, library, button. Okay, I used the, the LinkedIn blue, so which is 4875B4. That color. And now we need to make the text white. So color is white. Okay, there we go. I also don't like the the outline, so let's get rid of that. All right. Button active and button focus. Outline none. Okay, cool. And then I'll just add some padding and stuff. Padding, let's do half a rem for the top and bottom, and the two rem for the sides. Font size, this is just gonna be one rem. And just border radius to make it rounded. Radius. And I went with three rem. And there we go, that's our button. Now all we have to do is package this up and then, well, hold on, one second. All right, so we're just gonna package up the, <coughs> the library uh, and that was the command that we wrote in our package JSON, uh, this one. So it's gonna be yarn build colon lib and assuming that everything is connected correctly, it should just work. Oh no. NG Packager must be explicitly whitelisted. Are you serious? <laughs> NG Packager. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. And there's our package, and these are all the stuff that we just created, just compiled now. So that's pretty gross. It's also pretty gross. Some type definitions for the button. And just to show that it still works, um, our app module, we're gonna, is it, oh, no. Is this still in here? This. I'm gonna see if it works. Um. So now we're just gonna do dot dot slash this. Oh, let's have to go up one more level. Okay, yeah, this. See, does that still work? Yep. So this is getting the button module from our compiled version. 
And if you want to publish this to NPM, you just have to uh, create an account on NPM, uh, and then make sure you do an NPM login in your console. And then finally, just uh, CD into your disk folder, and you just have to do. Uh, you just have to run npm publish. I'm not gonna do that here because uh, this is just an example. But, oops, what did I do? But yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, if you also if you're like me and you don't want to pollute the npm ecosystem, there's a neat little trick that you can do. So if you do, if you just add to your package JSON, um, so the name doesn't matter. So for example, if I wanted to actually create and publish this directory, I would probably just call it my components slash angular because I would definitely want to do it for React as well. And then you just do a git plus, and then the git um, URL here, like so. And make sure that once you're you've installed, or yeah, once you've done the oh god, click yarn install. And do all this stuff, and you would have installed the your component library through Git and GitHub, and it's going to be listed under this directory. So if we just go into node modules, which I also don't recommend you do, and then to the component library that you just created, there's your your Git folder. So slash Angular, and then this is the component library that I created um, earlier, so it looks pretty similar to what we did, um, except I use SAS, but not a big thing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I definitely recommend creating a component library, especially if you're a front-end developer. Um, just um, I think it would be a good exercise. So. If we go to Bootstrap here, just uh, create all these different um, components that you can reuse for your projects over and over again. And if you're more of a designer than I am, uh, you could, you know feel free to make your projects look really good, especially if you can make it look better than Bootstrap since it's being used everywhere. All right, I'll see you guys next time.